What's up guys, Shirley here. Today we're going to take a look at the Council of Dreams on Mythic. We're playing a slightly different uh, build for the Arms Warrior today, as this is a predominantly Klee fight, if RNG is on your side anyway. I'm playing Improved Sweeping Strikes to give us a little bit more duration. Um, Fervor of Battle, you don't have to play that. You could play like a standard single target build with uh, just Improved Sweeping Strikes, but I'm playing Fervor for this one because it's fun. And also, I drop Fatality for one rank in Bloodborne. And off the rip here, we're going to charge in, use our CDs, and start cleaving down Pip with Urktos. I am going to back off the boss just a hair there, just to make sure that when Erwin jumps, I'm cleaving her with my Thunderous Roar. I want to get that on all three targets and get value out of that uh, Bloodborne talent. And then we're going to be avoiding the first Soak charge off Urktos, and... When he comes back in, we're going to get on Erwin and start cleaving her down, and then I'm going to be soaking the second charge set here, and we're going to be putting all of our damage into Erwin using a, our, our sweeping strikes on cooldown to cleave Urktos as much as possible. And uh, predominantly, we're leaving uh, Pip to our range DPS because he's the one that's going to jump around the most. However, anytime he's close like this, I'm going to hit him because he's usually the one that's going to fall a little bit behind here. And it's good just to get bleeds up on him, you know, to keep spread pressure up for arms anyway. But as our cooldown uh, Claw Smash comes back up here, I'm going to swap back over to Erwin and cleave that on these two as much as I can. Uh, I do get ducked here, and uh, we don't clear the middle here. We're saving those, so i got to run back off to the side there and, and get uh, those flowers soaked, just keeping as much raid damage down as we can here. Uh, luckily, when our Avatar and Thunderous Roar came back up, I've got uh, these two targets to cleave it on, so I'm going to send those immediately. Ideally, you're just cycling those as fast as possible on two targets. Sometimes they're spread out like this and you don't have that option available. I would probably hold them for, you know, 10 seconds or so if I had to, just so I could hit two targets with that Thunderous Roar at least. Uh, but we're going to get back in the middle here, cleave down Pip a little bit before he you know, teleports away and starts his song. I'm going to stand in the flower here just briefly to uh, clear that song dot debuff off of us, soaking the charge and charging ourselves towards Erwin to continue cleaving these two down. And uh, during our Colossus Smash windows here, as long as you've got enough haste for it, I would opt to spend more rage with Whirlwind rather than using Overpower. Uh, and that's just to get up a bigger test of Might buff and keep up as much of this bleed damage, you know, spread on as many targets as we can here. We're going to leap to the other side of the room because Pip was getting ahead, and ideally I wanted to cleave him there, but then he immediately teleports out, and uh, we're going to sit on Urktos here until he does his charge. I'm going to eat that and then charge back over to Pip here, heal herself a little bit uh, as we charge into a thing. Now, luckily, Pip teleports again, and we got lucky for with, with his spawn here. He's in the middle of the room, so we can actually do some damage to him. And uh, ironically, at this part of the fight, we get lucky here again as our third set of cooldowns come up here so we can keep, you know, cycling damage on Pip as, as often as possible, stepping back just to soak the flower there during his song so we don't get stunned. Um... I do want to say, though, that this fight, ironically, feels like an arena match to me a lot of times. As a warrior, you just want to be doing pressure to what's ever next to you. So if you don't have Heroic Leap up or a charge, you just want to hit what's there. And a lot of times, you know, it's not ideal that it's Urktos, but sometimes you're forced. It's better to do that than, you know, spend 10 seconds of your uptime running around the room doing nothing. So, yeah, I'm going to leap out of the way of this charge here and get back on Erwin. And uh, we see that that's... Uh, Urktos is getting down to execute phase, so I'm going to hit him just briefly here just so I can start getting these execute stacks up and then soaking this charge before we get back on Erwin. And ideally, this is when she hits 35% and we can start cleaving executes between the two of these two. Um, and yeah, we're just ramping up our Juggernaut stacks at this point. You can throw up a Spell Reflect to help mitigate some of this magic damage during the knockback window as well as Pip's Song, so I'm going to be using that as often as possible. Fortunately, they all spread out here, so, you know, nearest target next to me is Pip. Pip's always good to hit if you can hit him, because he's the one that's moving the most. Unless your raid has a ton of, like, range split damage, like a Moonkins and Warlocks and whatnot. 
But yeah, we're just going to continue cycling on him and then move around to Erwin, playing pinball right here. Luckily, I get another perfect lineup for cooldowns here to hit two targets with it, so we don't have to delay anything. It couldn't have went any better for ARMS. Um, ARMS is great on this boss just in general because it is a split or a two-target to three-target cleave boss. As far as melee goes, you know, it, it doesn't get much better than that for a boss like this, just hitting at least two targets. Pip, most of the time he's out of the way. You know, you might get a god pole where all three of them are stacked up at numerous times, but it's not very often. Anytime this charge comes out too, by the way, off Urktos, uh, and you're not supposed to be soaking that particular one, you want to give him an extremely wide berth, so I'm swinging around the backside and then getting to max melee range off of his tail because his hitbox on his charge is so big that you really don't want to be, you know, anywhere near him when it goes off. Uh, Pip te teleporting around now. We got to back off him just to soak the blossom here to get this debuff off us so we don't get stunned. I'm going to continue hitting him. I should have soaked the charge there, but the call was made that it was going at Pip, and then at the last second it swapped, so I didn't get that, uh, that soak in time. But we're going to move over here, and we see a, another two-target cleave opportunity, so anytime arms can do that, we're going to take advantage of this. This charge I could have soaked, but, you know, it's about dead. We're on, not autopilot, but I'm paying attention to my weak or saying not to soak, so that's why I didn't soak that one there. But, uh, yeah, these two go down. We get the Dispel debuff on us, but it doesn't really matter at this point. You can use it a defensive anytime that that is on you, especially if there's two of them stacked. We get one last cycle of cooldowns, and down goes the Mythic Council of Dreams. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, these videos have been a little bit delayed because the holidays in the U.S. here for us, and then I got fairly sick for, you know, a week or so afterwards, so hopefully we're back to normal content. Um, don't have Fearleth yet, still, unfortunately. I haven't missed a kill or anything. Uh, it just hasn't had any luck yet, so I'll keep you updated on that. Anyway, see you next time. Peace.